hurricanes, cyclones, typhoons. They are all pretty much measured in the same way and they need the same exact conditions to exist. So what's with the different names? Stop right there, my friends. If you have not already, click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon. Click all and you will get all notifications from this channel. And trust me, you won't be disappointed. Good afternoon, my friends. April 12th, 2021, 12.35 p.m. And really quick, before I jump into the topic of today's video, we are finally seeing the tail end of that very big storm system that put a big damper on southern Florida, most of Florida yesterday, and now just finally passing underneath the keys we could see here a lot of reports of some big hail very powerful straight line winds and some flash flooding there's some crazy videos out on the internet with some of the winds that were taking place in Florida as we said yesterday it's going to cool down a little bit in the east and we also have a little bit of an advisory for Texas today tomorrow's going to be a little bit better but as far as the severe weather watch this is what we got Texas is in the crosshairs and of course any important updates as far as that goes I will report as soon as possible Alrighty, now one of the more common questions I get when it comes to hurricane season specifically being that I live in the U.S. is what is the difference between a hurricane, a cyclone, and a typhoon? This chart you are looking at does some of the explanations and simply put, the names represent the specific areas in which they take place. For example, take today. We have two pretty significant situations going on with two of these systems in the Pacific Ocean. We have 94W here and 28P here just above New Zealand. And and then on the other side of Australia, we have Cyclone Saroja. So this would be called a cyclone because it's technically in the Indian Ocean and below the equator. And now having that information, we can come back over to the Tropical Cyclone Distribution Chart and we can clearly see that that part of Australia is considered a cyclone zone underneath the equator, which in turn makes Cyclone Saroja a cyclone as opposed to a typhoon. Coming back over to Ventu Sky, now let's take a look at 94W and 28P. We already determined what Saroja is, being that it's in the Indian Ocean and below the equator. We'll talk about what the equator does in just a second. So now let's look at where 94W and 28P line up on our chart. And now once again, using this simple information, we know that 94W is in this area, making it a typhoon. 28P is in this area, as we said, just above New Zealand, making it a cyclone. This is also the same exact situation that takes place in North America or the Atlantic Ocean and the northern part of the Pacific Ocean. So this is the area in which we call them hurricanes. That's why you don't hear of hurricanes in the Indian Ocean or really in the Western Pacific, because the hurricane name is strictly for the Atlantic Ocean and that northeastern part of the Pacific. I won't lie, it did take me a while to be able to digest and memorize exactly what those changes are and what they mean. And I've been asked some even more detailed questions about that, including the equator and the directions in which the storm spins. So really quickly, now we'll talk about what the equator does. The equator, basically picture that imaginary line right about here. So we have 94W above it, and then we have Saroja, which is a cyclone we talked about, and also 28P is a cyclone, 94W being a typhoon because it's in this section of the Pacific Ocean. Now with the equator line, I want you to notice something. 94W is spinning counterclockwise, just like hurricanes do. Below the equator, storms spin clockwise. And if you've ever wondered why, just look up a term called the Coriolis effect and you will understand why things spin counterclockwise in the north and clockwise in the south. I'll read this to you very quickly. In fact, tropical cyclones, the general name for the storms called typhoons, hurricanes, or cyclones, Cyclones in different parts of the world always spin counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere and spin the opposite direction in the southern hemisphere. And I did hear that information many times over the past couple years, but one day it kind of just clicked in my head and it was like my brain exploded. I'm like, it makes perfect sense and it really does. So now that you know that information and you can apply it to your weather forecasting, things will be much, much easier. Now what's cool about this chart right here is this one actually shows the seasons in which most of these storms take place, cyclones, typhoons, hurricanes. As we know, or at least most of us know, in North America or the Atlantic Ocean, the hurricane season runs from 
June 1st to November 30th. That may change to May 15th, being that the storms have been starting a lot earlier than June 1st. But regardless, each part of the world has its own season for cyclones, and we'll just quickly go over it. So the Pacific side of North America is May through November. Those are hurricanes, usually forming in the Central American area and then moving west and then north towards the Baja region of California. Then we have our hurricanes in the Atlantic Ocean, obviously our big season we're always forecasting and talking about. The tropical cyclones in the South Atlantic are in fact very rare and don't really occur too much. And then as we move farther to the east, we have our Indian Ocean, which has a tropical cyclone season from October to May, which fits right into the cyclone we are watching now, Saroja. And then a bit to the north in the northern Indian Ocean, we have tropical cyclones from April through December. And then of course, our western Pacific Ocean, where we have typhoons up here, cyclones down here by New Zealand. These take place October through May, and then the upper part of the Pacific, the typhoons, April through January. So just getting started here in the western Pacific. But with all that said, I don't want you to forget that there are many times where we have out-of-season storms. So we've had hurricanes outside of the normal June 1st to November 30th timeline, and the same goes for all the other areas that produce typhoons and cyclones. You can get those rare storms. Those things happen, but the basic guidelines give us some fairly decent information to follow based on history, of course, and allows us to have charts like this to help us in our forecasting. Last but not least, I was just recently asked a really good question about a storm, about the possibility of a storm crossing the equator. What would happen to a storm that crosses the equator? If they spin counterclockwise in the north, clockwise in the south, what happens if one crosses? Well, the answer is fairly simple. It may not be the answer you want, but as these storms approach the equator, they will get weaker. So, take the Atlantic Ocean, for example. Our storms come off the west coast of Africa, many times by the Cape Verde Islands. It swoops down towards the equator, and then they either come straight into the Gulf, they come up into the United States, with the momentum obviously pushing north. And then if we move down into this area, we could see that almost the opposite happens. Storms that form above the equator want to shoot north just like in the Atlantic. Storms that form below the equator tend to want to swerve down as you can see Saroja doing underneath Australia. So as storms approach the equator they tend to get weaker. I know that is a lot of information to take in and remember so if you have to definitely re-watch the video. I definitely won't stop you from doing that. It took me a long time to actually get this down and understand it properly. That's why these charts are very useful especially the ones that break down the seasons and then adding the explanation about the equator really just gives you the extra knowledge you need for it all to just make sense in your head. I want to thank you all for watching this rambling video I made. I hope everyone enjoyed it. If you have any questions or anything you would like to add to it, feel free to leave it in the comments section, and we will talk about this as time goes on as we approach the Atlantic hurricane season. Shout out to Canada. I hope everyone is safe. I will talk to you all very, very soon. It is now 1.32 p.m., and that's all I got. Bye-bye.